This 1978 animated Lord of the Rings adaptation was reviled by many critics at the time of its release, is adored by lots of Lord of the Rings fans now, and the real kicker is, it's a part one and it never got a sequel. As discussed in my last video, my microphone is broken, so today we have the speaking spatula. Hi, my name is Dylan. Uh, you might remember me from the ending of Squid Game. And I'm Jess, part-time Hobbit, and today we're gonna watch another obscure Lord of the Rings adaptation. Although I would argue that this one is possibly verging on the not obscure. To talk about the background of this movie, we need to talk about its animator and director, Ralph Bakshi. You have thoughts about him, right? I'm a huge Ralph Bakshi fan. Uh, I love um, his movies. Ralph Bakshi started out low in the ranks of Terry Toons, and animation company in I believe the 50s or 60s is when he got his start there. But then in the late 60s, he branched out and started his own studio. And then in the early 70s, that's where we see him kind of pioneering this idea of adult animation. Adult animation was not hugely prevalent at the time. And when, when you had movies that were for adults, and animated, they were generally movies that anybody could really watch, but that adults would probably appreciate more. Like things like Fantastic Planet, whereas what he started doing with things like Fritz the Cat especially, uh, was kind of bringing in really raunchy humor, in many ways a forebearer of Family Guy and South Park and maybe even The Simpsons. In 1972, he came out with Fritz the Cat, which was really kind of his big landmark, this is who I am, this is the kind of stuff I right. make film. And did it do well? Do you remember? Uh, it did do well. Uh, there's a famous poster of Fritz uh, with his arm wrapped around another woman with this big tagline that says, we ain't rated X for nothing, baby. And that, I think, pulled in a lot of people. <laughs> but either way, I don't think it would be wrong for me to say that he really established himself as someone that wasn't afraid to make new and risky forms of animated movies. Yeah, and he wasn't afraid to get a little weird with the animation itself. Yes. Um, I think it's American Pop has this sequence that is intercut between animated acts of violence and then images from real newspapers of actual acts of violence. A very interesting way of depicting what he wanted to depict. Even back in his Terry Toons days, he'd had the idea of a animated Lord of the Rings adaptation on his mind. He thought that animation would be the perfect medium to adapt this, and just looking at how many failed and attempted Lord of the Rings adaptations had come along by this point, he really wanted to be able to get his hands on the material in order to make his own adaptation. So this brings us to one of my favorite topics to talk about mm. in Lord of the Rings adaptations. Do you know what that is? Is it the John Borman script? It's the John Borman script. I saw the notes, but also I really do love that script. <laughs> it's, we've talked about this before, but the John Borman script was really I believe in the uh, 70s or 60s by a guy named John Borman and he compressed all three of the Lord of the Rings movies into one. Frodo and Galadriel uh, get it on at one point. There's lots of weird flesh puppets. There's, there's lots of uh, just incredibly trippy moments. Great script, it is online. However, someday we're gonna make a version of it. We're gonna make this thing a reality Absolutely. someday. And it's gonna be beautiful. Yeah, long story short, didn't get made because it was, you know, insane. Either way, it, it was deemed unfilmable and this left the rights in a kind of limbo, which means Ralph Bakshi was able to approach and basically ask if he could make his own version. He was able to take a look at what John Borman had done with compressing three books into one movie and to say, that's a really bad idea for this story. So he wanted to either make it into two or three parts. It's also funny because they did try to get him to make John Borman's script as an animated or live action movie. And he, he pretty much just said, no, this is bad. Either way, what Bakshi intended to do with his adaptation of The Lord of the Rings was to remain very true to Tolkien's original vision. He even went as far as meeting with Priscilla Tolkien, Tolkien's daughter, and promising her that he was going to stay true to Tolkien's vision, which is, uh, that's that's risky. That's a risky move. What a chad. <laughs> I want you to guess, and you in the audience, uh, comment down below now, uh, who approached Bakshi requesting to play Frodo? This is your time to guess. Christopher Walken. Uh, uh, 70s. Jack Nicholson. 
That's your second guess. Uh, you only have one more. I'm have... doing a middle finger to the camera. I'm sorry. <laughs> you only have one more. <laughs> uh, uh... Mick Jagger. Yo. He uh. didn't make it into the 1978 Lord of the Rings because they had already they had already voice acted the whole thing and it was like <laughs> too far in production. I'll take the ring tomorrow. <laughs> you know how he speaks? <laughs> You know Mick Jagger, you know the way he talks? <laughs> After playing around with the structure of the films for a while, they decided to put it into two parts instead of three because they were confused about the middle movie. And Bakshi wanted to use as much rotoscoping as possible. For rotoscoping, you take live action footage and then you literally print out each frame. And then what Bakshi did is trace every single frame into his own artistic style. So we're going to see a lot of rotoscoping as well as traditional animation in this. There was an interesting interplay as they were making this movie because a lot of people wanted him to do live action. Especially, he's coming back around, John Borman actually was really frustrated that it was going to be an animated movie and even Ralph Bakshi started to be swayed a little bit towards that when he saw the live action footage that they were shooting for the rotoscoping. So by the time Bakshi had finished animating this movie, he only had four weeks left to cut it together. He even asked for a three month extension but was denied, mm. so he had those four weeks to cut it together. So he had to take it from 150 minutes, which was the original cut, down to the about 135 that it is now. We are going to talk about this film's reception after we watch it and why it didn't get a sequel. So stay tuned to the end for our full thoughts and I guess the rest of this production story. But without any further ado, let's watch this movie. All right. Apparently Ralph Bakshi came to hate this soundtrack eventually. Oh really? Yeah, he hated it. He decided it was too generic. It's not bad, but I could see that. Yeah. The screenplay writer, I forgot to say, Peter S. Beagle also wrote uh, the book of The Last Unicorn, which was another Bakshi film, so oh, fun fact. This really just looks kind of like live action silhouettes. It actually is. I think. Yeah, I think you're, but like it's hard to tell if it was animated <laughs> off of the live action silhouettes. Oh. It's a cool way to do the intro though. But the ring slipped off Gollum's finger too. And so it, it looks kind of like a, like a, a peach ring. It's very <laughs> thick. And like angular. Yeah. Our precious, our precious, our birthday present. I'm really glad that Andy Serkis figured out the Gollum voice mm. in a way that's kind of like intimidating and not just funny because some of the previous ones are just pretty funny Yeah, to me. they're just goofy. The faces are a little unnerving to me. Immediately, I am a little bit afraid. I totally understand. Maybe it's because of the rotoscoping, but there's like a lot of extraneous, especially face movement mm. that makes me... Uh, yeah, a little bit uncomfy. I No, I get it. It's a very specific way of animation. Or animating. Look. <laughs> I really do love... No joke, that was just a really good face. The scenery is very... I like it, it's pretty. I like the trees. Because of how expressive they are, even when they're not saying anything. In the reaction shots, yeah. Yeah, they look like mimes. I think for me, we're starting to get almost into like uncanny valley territory. Yeah. yeah. They did Sam dirty in this. Why is he like half the height of Frodo? That would make him like 18 inches tall. Frodo's like three foot something. Me goes there. Me. Ooh, I want to live there. <laughs> if I walked into some guy's house and he had spikes on his pillars, I would assume he's turned evil already. Yeah. I, I wouldn't really be in this. My old friend, who's good. <laughs> yeah. Especially when he's got bangs like that. <laughs> this is how wizard fights happen. I do understand what he meant about the soundtrack. Cause it's like, it's the classical kind of thing, but it's not quite Howard Shore where it's like the classical epic. It's more like classic jaunty early Hollywood music, you know? Yeah, it definitely feels very 70s fantasy. Yeah. I like how he's not wearing black. Oh. He's like you. 
That's not how I move. That is not how I move. That's just, that's exactly, that's how she walks around. That's every not how. <laughs> she goes, <laughs> Okay, I do do that. I do do that part. I mean, the art really is beautiful. Oh, like, yeah. It shows a lot of, like, love and attention for Middle Earth. Absolutely. How did they get stuck in a different art style? Oh, the legs. How come you never dress like that? I do, all the time. Where am I when that happens? Nowhere close. <laughs> Why is he so scantily clad? I don't know, but I sure am scantily glad to see it. Oh, you know what? They cut out Tom Bombadil and everything. They did. That must have been where Peter Jackson got that. Obviously, he probably could have come to the same conclusion himself, but right. it's entirely possible he was inspired by this. Me when, um, me, my, my face when the pizza shop tells me that they can't put whole hard-boiled eggs on my triple cheese pizza. I was going to say my face when I murder someone in their bed. Oh. Uh... This goes on much longer. I'll become a wraith. Don't speak of such things. He's just trying to make a joke, jeez. Shut your stupid hobbit mouth. This sure is a long walk. You shut up. You shut up right now. Oh, cool. Oh, that looks so cool. This is Good not for Frodo. Go well. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, but it, it was nice of him to try. Well, it was worth the shot. Well, that was also his arm, not his chest. But, you know, I guess, small target. You do it again. Ah, oh, Legolas. <sighs> okay, sure. Yes, Sam. That's an elf. Oh. He's dying and he took the chance to be kind of a little ass about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's what they look like. <laughs> Sam, no resting can help your Mr. Frodo now. Do you recognize uh, Legolas's voice? I do, because we also sort of went over it. I don't think it, you told me who it was, but I'm pretty sure I know. That's C-3PO, baby. Yeah, yeah. He's a little less robot in this one. And a little less flamboyant. Whoa, I don't like that shot. That was cool. Uh-uh, <laughs> uh-uh. No. Ooh. I, I am a little confused about... What's happening? About how they pulled him into the alternate dimension. Because it seems like no one else is there. This is an odd sequence. But I like it. On, a, on an artistic kind of like... Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm just a little confused. Yes. No. <laughs> Never mind. Maybe this is just a nightmare thing that he's I, having. It may be a just in his head situation. There are a lot of long silences while they make facial expressions. Yes. And I, I'm not sure... <laughs> Why? <laughs> but you won't send him off alone, surely? <laughs> well, we don't want to send him with you, I tell you what. That would take the ring too close to Isengard and Aruman. Did he just mess up Saruman's name? I, I do know that because I think they say Saruman at yeah. points in this movie. But I know that this is also somewhat infamous for just occasionally saying his name wrong. Good. How have Boromir and Aragorn been getting by looking like that? How has Sam been getting by looking like that? <laughs> <gasps> I liked in the Peter Jackson movie how they built anticipation for this moment, but I also like it here where it just kind of happens. happens. Bill! Bill, no! Bill! No! The implications were awful! Did you see that? A little hand was reaching for Bill! I don't want to watch this anymore. Did you just see that? That was just the actor's faces. That wasn't animated at all. Seems to be a record of the Poor Sam! Did Legolas' bow just change styles? Yes, it did. <laughs> That was good. Thank you, Boromir. Thank you so much, Boromir. That was really good. Thank you. Listen, I know he's wearing that mithril vest, but that definitely hurt. I'm all right. I can walk. I was just playing you. I was just joking you. <laughs> they didn't even take a second to do no. like the dramatic like. <gasps> it was just. 
I'm okay. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Yeah, the boys. It's just they're just a warthog with wings and a whip. Actually, it's a guy in a suit. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Oh, he can fly. Just flap your wings, dude. Okay, never mind then. I love how that was good. Completely unbothered. At it was falling. very much just all right. Bye, guys. Uh, fly. Uh, yeah, head out. <laughs> oh, oh no, here. here we are. Okay. It's a song about Gandalf, isn't it? Yes. Sounds a little it's too grandio. children's choiry. It's a little too children's choiry, and this looks like a cult setup right here. This looks like that scene in um the the Star Wars movie, you know, the really good one. Rise where, of Skywalker. Yeah. The one when all the Sith. Yeah, are standing I was around. Literally thinking exactly that, and I was like, "Well, she's not going to reference that. I don't want to talk about." Yeah, the really good one, right? I don't want to talk about. You Rises. love that scene. I like the effect on her ring. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Oh, shall love me and despair. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the tone I would have taken for that scene. No. It's, and obviously I grew up with Peter Jackson, so my opinions are gonna be different, but I also think it kind of moves her less from the powerful, like, primal force that Tolkien made Galadriel, and more into the kind of 1960s and 70s, like, fantasy maiden. It also was unclear about what she was really saying. Obviously, she was saying, I'll be beautiful and terrible, and like, oh, terrible, that's a negative word. <laughs> but she's sort of just dancing around and saying it, even earlier when he offers it to Gandalf. Gandalf is like, no, you cannot do it! But she was just kind of like, oh, that would be cr I love that. <laughs> Sorry, was that? <laughs> <laughs> He's so fast. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately sinks to the bottom. Ooh. We got a little guy. It's E.T. It's fun action sequences, that's for sure. The mix of animation styles makes them super visually interesting. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Oh, sorry, bud. My battery ran out, um, so it's snack time, and Dylan just dropped. I just food onto my bed. I promise. Top ten saddest anime deaths. It's probably at number three, right behind Jerry Seinfeld and Corey in the house. Yeah, he got got to keep his little hat. Yeah. Got his little tiki torches. So I want to go out. Mm -hmm. When they said they were gonna run fast, they they were not lying. Oh, never mind. Did he just trip on his own sword? What? And then just cut to them. That feels like it was an outtake. A lot of this feels like it was an outtake. This is a very long shot. It's like that Monty Python bit. <laughs> He's running forever. A really long shot. Oh, okay. So you know what I said about him looking like Mac from Mac and Me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's also, like, really broad-shouldered in a way that I don't like. It's the mouth that gets me. It looks like that one, uh, I'm making a Spongebob, re SpongeBob reference. Oh, yes. The old woman? Yeah. Chocolate. I remember when they first invented chocolate. Yeah, so between... Her and Mac from Mac and Me. Mm -hmm. We get Gollum. Oh! <laughs> I love the way he walks. <laughs> Him! I love the way he looks! His design is stellar. Yeah, I really like the way that his roots get stuck in the ground every time he steps. Ooh, he did a spin! <gasps> hey guys! That is not what he looked like. That is not what the Balrog looked like, I promise you. This is a much cooler Balrog. He's got a lot of spikes. That's like, that's, that's too many spikes. If you have more than 25 spikes of over five inches in your home, that's too many spikes and you're evil. Oh, Grima. Oh. <laughs> I'm so high right now. <laughs> Thought he was gonna bite his hand. Me too. 
It would have been cool, but this was also nice. It's kind of a lame sounding horn, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and it just keeps going! Now that's a good horn. Yeah, I can- I can handle that horn. I wonder if that was, like, just a bad take. Yeah. Cause that was, like, that really kinda... I, the, the timing there kinda ruined the moment a little, I've gotta be honest. <laughs> Why is this the angle that we're getting this at? They said, you know what we haven't seen enough of? Smeagol's chin and armpits. Yeah, I like this one. This is scary. Is this the battle for Helm's Deep? Yes, yes it is. I was sitting here and I was going, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> slamming a log into, into thick stone walls. <laughs> hey, they're powerful, not smart. I like how they're just sitting casually in a pile of skulls. There's a seat made of skulls. What are you gonna do, not sit on it? Yeah. Now back in Jersey, we do that all the time. What comes after that? We shall see. Oh yeah. I mean, they're well done action scenes. They're just primarily live action. There he is! Yeah. I do love how every time he's on a horse, you can see that his hat is like not on him, but sort no. of attached to him. I imagine he has like a string around the chin. Yeah. Uh oh. As their gallant battle ended, so too ends the first great tale of The Lord of the Rings. I guess that's it. Give me one word to describe what you're feeling. Um, worn out. That's two words. <laughs> In my opinion, that came the closest to telling the actual story, not to mention that, but the most amount of story, right. as we've seen in one of these adaptations, which is an incredibly impressive feat. My primary critique for it then is that it felt a little bit unfinished. And that may stem partially from the fact that he was super rushed, and he later said that this was one of the most exhausting production processes that he ever experienced, and this turned him off from adapting other people's works, like, pretty much for good. Because of not only how exhausting the production process was, but also how aggressively the fans came after him. This was a financial success. It made over okay. $30 million on a $2 million budget. Not bad. So it, it was a financial success, but a lot of people were disappointed that it wasn't advertised as a part one, which it wasn't, even though it is, because the studio thought that people wouldn't want to come see a part one. So they made him cut the part one from the title and redub Frodo and Sam's closing lines, which we couldn't quite hear, but he made them a little more conclusive than they originally oh, okay. were. They tried to wrap it up and make it seem like it was its own individual story. I was surprised at how much of the story they were able to tell. It felt cohesive at the very least. It just felt like a, it was rushing along. It really feels like it's covering more story than it should be because I I felt more exhausted after watching this than I probably would feel after watching Fellowship of the Ring. Yes. And Fellowship of the Ring is another 40 minutes on top of the length of this. But it feels like it's telling the appropriate amount of story. And this does not feel like that. I think the battle sequences, especially because of how heavily they relied on using the live action footage, those got a little messy in terms of actual like coherence, as yeah. in like what is happening at a given point, especially the Battle of Helm's Deep, which is a confusing battle. But here I think it got extra confusing, especially because it's towards the end and your attention might be slipping. And I know that that Bakshi ended up also agreeing with this, that there was a little too much rotoscoping, and he wishes that in instead of directly tracing the frames from the live action footage, that he had instead just used them as inspiration, because the end product kind of is this weird cross between animated and live action that really works in some parts and is really distracting in others. I disagree for the most part, because it is, it is a very noticeable look. What I'll say is that I have never seen another movie that looks like this. And that alone is like commendable on some level for me. For me, this is a deeper artistic discussion that right. we're gonna have to
to have later yeah. because I don't necessarily think that something being unique and the only thing that exists that was done in this style means that it is good. I think it's interesting and I did enjoy it. However, for me, it distracted from the plot and it distracted me from being able to pay attention to the characters, to the story, which especially in an adaptation of something, I think is what you should be focusing on. I really appreciate it for how I think it kind of primed the pumps and set the stage for Peter Jackson to be able to step in and make his adaptation. Because finally we saw an adaptation that actually was able to encompass some amount of the story and do it well and have the action sequences and have it mostly make sense. And so I appreciate it for what it was able to do in terms of the whole scope of Tolkien adaptations. The only example of downright bad, I think, was the Balrog. That That is, I mean, all a lot of it looks like people in suits, but a lot of the characters are humanoid characters. They're meant right. to be a creature who walks around and looks sort of like a human. That Balrog just looks well, like a guy in a Halloween costume. <laughs> and then especially to have, later on, have the art of the oh Balrog God, yeah. <laughs> that looked great. The art of the Balrog looked fantastic. And it's like, okay, then at that point you just fully animate it. Exactly. Then you, you just don't rotoscope it. Or if you do, you just take inspiration like he, he ended up wanting to do. I think a lot of the issues that I'm having with it, are they aren't the script. They aren't that kind of thing. They aren't the vision behind it necessarily, because I think overall the script is probably one of the best ones we've seen. However, it, it is just in the execution. It's just in the things that I think could have been ironed out if he had another like three months to work on it. So this may be another case of the producers kind of not fully committing to the project and not fully believing in it and that being what doomed it a little bit. Yeah. Which is so important because this led into the Peter Jackson version in which the studio actually put faith into the creator and because they gave him all the support and money he needed, we got what we got. Again, closest we've gotten. Mm -hmm. I feel glad because the last few that we've done, we've come out saying this is the closest we've gotten and I, we are continuing that upward trend to be fair the next one that we do is also awesome. not good i don't think it's going to be very good because next up we are covering the return of the king not made by ralph bakshi but made by rankin and bass who made the hobbit that we watched last time on this uh on this series i don't know how they're gonna do that because obviously there's a bit of a leap from the hobbit to the return of the king so i i'm pretty curious if you want to check out the Rankin and Bass Hobbit to get ready for that. Uh, I will link the playlist uh, above us so that you can check out the whole playlist that we've done. I highly recommend some of the earlier ones in it because the really bad ones are really bad. They are really bad. I also know that a lot of you probably really enjoy this and watched it as children or discovered it recently and really enjoy it. So I would love to hear what makes you so excited about it because I, I think it definitely had its merits and its demerits. So I want to know what you guys liked and what you thought could, you know, use some improvement. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of this adaptation. I do want to offer a preliminary apology for how much I had to watermark and change this footage in this video. I wanted to be able to put it on the internet, so I had to do that. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, hit the like button because it really helps me out in the algorithm and subscribe to my channel because um, because I just said you should, so. Does that work usually? No, not usually, uh, but I, I don't know if it ever works when I ask for people to subscribe, so. <laughs> you know, what, what am I gonna do? Just uh, subscribe to my channel because I like it. Thanks, all right. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and I hope that you all have a very happy hobbity day.